Ever since 2000 and the introduction of Survivor to the US, the concept of the reality show has been completely misconstrued. Let's face it, Survivor is a game show through and through. I mean, Tom Hanks and Castaway didn't have to compete against other people for a million dollars. Did he? Reality is completely misleading. As soon as the camera cuts to any angle or any interview, reality ceases to exist. Of course, it wouldn't be very exciting or entertaining if we had to watch thousands upon thousands of hours of boring bullshit in between challenges that no one has to go through in real life. And for that reason, we're calling Super Ghosts and Ghosts a documentary more than anything else. We're here to document our experiences, not only for entertainment purposes, but for informational purposes. We don't operate within bounds or restrictions. No prizes here or stupid competitions where we have to fight for the love of a 40-something has-been lead singer of a hair metal band that helped kill the genre started and influenced by Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, and Iron Maiden. So why are we doing it? Honestly? Well, we were playing with a new night vision camera system when we captured this shocking video. On a more serious, yet hilarious note, because we can. I guess you could say we're kind of like ghost debunkers, if you will, searching for nothing rather than something. We're going in with an open mind and a complete lack of any information or experience other than what we've seen on TV. We absolutely do not believe in ghosts. However, unlike some people, we are willing to change our minds if we can find something. So we're heading out on a seven day road trip to locations across the eastern United States already known for their hauntings, but we're not going there to back up these claims. We've got some theories and equipment of our own we're out to test in attempts to maybe kill or revive this slowly dying subgenre of television. Now all we need is evidence. We need tangible, I can reach out and touch the marshmallow like substance that ghosts are made of evidence. And if we can get enough evidence in our first try, that's it, we'll stop. We'll get out of your way. But if not, we're gonna stick around and eat all your food and sleep on your couch until we say, hey, are there any ghosts in here? And something responds, Zoop. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. No matter how hard you try, you We wouldn't be very good ghost hunters if we went in knowing absolutely nothing about the history of our field, would we? The first reported ghost hunt goes back as far as 100 AD, when Pliny the Younger told the tale of a haunted house in Athens. Problem was, the story was already over 100 years old by the time he told it. Word traveled fast back then. In 1862, a paranormal research group called the Ghost Club was created in London. Notable members included Charles Dickens and some other old guys I've never heard of. In the mid-1880s, a philosopher named William James founded the American Psychological Association, whose basic mission was to apply scientific technique in the field of paranormal investigation. Now, it seems to me that ghost hunting didn't get popular until 1984, when a little biographical movie came out called Ghostbusters. Those real ghost hunters watching this are probably rolling their eyes. You have to admit, it's probably the most accurate and funny movie ever made. It's all true, by the way. I mean, they had to change some of the names and stuff, but all of that happened for real. With its popularity and the emergence of reality TV, ghost hunting has made its way back into the spotlight again. And with it has come some backlash. There are basically three sides. Those who take it seriously. Those who take it really seriously. And those who don't. Although we're in the minority, it still gives us the freedom to do whatever we feel like without anyone breathing down our neck. We've watched almost 2,000 hours of ghost hunting material to get us familiar with what to do during a ghost hunt, and we've decided to forget them all. Some people say that first timers should never go alone, but we're breaking barriers. We're ignoring all the advice and going in head first. Radical? Yes. Stupid? Yes. Are you, are you nervous about tonight? Um, not, not really. I mean, he's going to be like sitting around in the dark. I doubt, I doubt we'll actually find anything. Well, I'm just saying like, 
just like it's the first place that we're going to and uh we don't know what's gonna happen no well, well, I, I'm I'm more I'm more worried about whether or not we're actually going to get anything, and whether this is just a complete waste of everyone's time. I'm worried about the other people that'll be there uh, that will ruin interfering their... with uh, with our super serious investigations. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Well, the key is that we need to find out what makes a good ghost hunter. I would tell anybody not to dabble with things that they don't understand. That's the key. Ah. Uh. Because. Uh, uh, everybody has like different opinions of what makes a good ghost hunter and by the end we have to be seasoned veterans you know we have to be better than ghost hunters oh which are we already I think, I, think, I think so because they're plumbers I think that automatically puts oh, us above them and we don't have jobs yeah so, great. <laughs> yeah alright <laughs> sounds like a plan to me we set out from our home base in Orlando Florida and traveled four hours up to Savannah Georgia to the Sorrell Weed House Savannah is known for being a hotbed of ghost activity, some claiming that the sidewalks and even the cocaine-addicted bums in the park are all haunted. We arrived at the house a few minutes early and decided to take a little stroll around Savannah to see if we could find any evidence. Well, we didn't find any ghosts, but we did see this guy. Because we don't have any pull, we had to tag along with a few other thrill seekers, aka tourists, in order to explore the house. That was fine by us. As long as they didn't get in our way, we were cool with that. Nobody seemed to care. We headed into the house and were given a nice little spiel about the history of the house. Built by Charles Blaney Klusky between 1839 and 1840 for Francis Sorrell, the Sorrell Weed House quickly became a landmark for its social parties and celebrations involving some of Savannah, Georgia's most renowned residents. Sorrell lived there with his wife and son Gilbert Moxley Sorrell, who became the youngest general of the Confederacy at age 26. Boring, right? Blah, 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 old man with moustaches. Blah, 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 corsets and crumpets. Here's the best part of this story. Francis Sorrell's wife jumped to her death from the second floor balcony after learning that Francis was having an affair with a slave girl named Molly. Several weeks later, Molly was found hung in her room. Some say it was not a suicide, but a murder. <laughs> Let the hunt begin. I'm starting my investigation in whatever this room is. There's a TV, I guess, ghost head. Ghost head TV. Oh, a TV. I like to watch. Wait, do, do that again. Shine that, shine that over there. Shine that over there? The light. Uh, it must have hit the TV because I saw like a bright flash. Should we ask the ghost some questions? Yeah. Um, if there's any ghosts in here, what was the name of the bad guy in Lethal Weapon 2? Because I cannot remember what the heck that guy's name is. He had diplomatic immunity. Um, he, oh, he was the old guy from the Mighty Ducks. He was Hans, I think. What was, what was his name in Lethal Weapon 2? If you can help me out, that would be great. Clearly the ghosts were playing hardball. Or maybe they just didn't know the answer to the question. By the way, his name was Arjun Aryan Rudd. We stuck around for another few minutes, waiting for any responses. When we couldn't take the boredom anymore, we decided to move on. Joe, I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. No, you don't. Oh. You know the rules. Hi, hi. Okay, wait a second. What the f was that? No, you don't. Oh. Hi, hi. 